Imagine being a classmate of James Joyce, being honoured for bravery in World War I, surviving the Titanic and finding fame as a photographer decades after your death. Welcome to the extraordinary life of the Jesuit, Father Frank Brown. We're here on the magnificent grounds of Emo Court in County Leash, which was home from 1930 to 1969 to the novitiate of the Irish Jesuits. The novitiate is the first stage in training of a Jesuit, and during that year, each novice would make a 30-day silent retreat following the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius. That would include, among other things, a kind of prayer called composition of place, where you would take a gospel scene and close your eyes and imagine what it looked like, what it smelt like, and so on. The use of imagination was very important. Now, Father Frank Brown wasn't a novice here, but he lived in this place for 30 years. Early on in his life, though, he had some extraordinary adventures. In 1897, he joined the Jesuits. Then he studied at the Royal University of Dublin, where one of his classmates was James Joyce. Joyce gives him a mention in his book, Finnegan's Wake. In 1912, he traveled on the Titanic from Southampton to Cove. Some friends he made on board offered to pay his way all the way to America. And so he telegrammed his superior, who replied famously and providentially, get off that ship. He became a chaplain to the Irish Guards in World War I. He was wounded five times and was honored for his bravery by several of the Allied governments. His lungs were so wounded by poisonous gas that he had to go to Australia for a convalescence. He became a teacher in Belvedere College in Dublin and founded a camera club there to enable the students to participate in the early days of popular photography. And then in 1929, he was sent here to Emo Court to become part of a group of Jesuits who would preach missions up and down the country, the length and breadth in parishes everywhere. Countless times in this work, he would have guided people in Ignatian prayer, teaching them to use their imaginations to encounter Christ in the Gospels. But he's most famous now for his vision through the camera lens. Everywhere he went, he took photographs. In Australia, on the Titanic, and in every town and village in Ireland in which he preached. But it was only well after his death in 1960 that he really found fame as a photographer. When he died, all his negatives were placed in a battered old suitcase and brought to the Jesuit archives in Dublin. And there they were forgotten about until 1986 when an archivist opened them up and discovered this extraordinary treasure trove. Since that time, the negatives were developed and some dozen or more books of his photographs have been published. Father Brown's Australia, Father Brown's Galway, and so on. His photographs are beautifully composed and beautifully observed. They show people at work, at prayer, at leisure. They show scenes of family life and commercial life. They show the games of children and the liturgy of the church. And above all, these photographs are sympathetic to their subjects. The gaze of Father Brown was clearly a loving gaze. And because of this, his photographs are more than just a record of life in 20th century Ireland. They are a monument to humanity, a monument to the men, women and children served by Father Brown as he preached the gospel. <laughs>